Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Wa salatu wa salam Ala rasulullah Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'in Allahumma fa'ni bima allamtani Wa allimni bima yanfa'ni Wa zidni ilman inna kal alim al hakim My topic today is about Write about quadrant pain Clinical and imaging orientation with the common causes this common causes and real causes with some example and essential information for diagnosis essential information for diagnosis Hepatobiliary etiologies like cholecystitis, hepatitis, cholelithiasis, cholelithiasis are common, are most common causes of white right upper quadrant pain. In most cases, when patient present with classic signs and symptoms of gallbladder related disease, ultrasound serves as best first-line screening modality, although CT scan lacks sensitivity and specificity for gallbladder-related disorder. It is superior modality for many other entities on differential diagnosis and may be required if ultrasound does not provide firm the diagnosis. MRI and MRCB, best non-invasive imaging modality for evaluation of biliary tree particularly stones. What are the differential diagnoses of the right upper quadrant pain? The common, we have common, and less common, and rare but important causes. The common causes include Acute cholecystitis with or without stones, either gallstone or cholelithiasis or cholelithiasis, acute hepatitis, hepatic stetosis, ascending cholangitis, and pancreatitis, acute pancreatitis, and duodenal ulcer. What are the help, helpful clues for common? Diagnosis, acute cholecystitis, 90 to 95% of patients with cholecystitis have stones with acute cholecystitis, further more than a calculus cholecystitis. Patient present with fever, right upper quadrant pain, and elevated white blood count. Ultrasound remain best diagnostic modality with imaging feature including gallbladder, wall thickening, presence of gallstones, sonographic Murphy sign, persistent sonographic Murphy sign, bericholecystic fluid, and wall hyperemia in Dublin ultrasound. Important complications in, include gangrenous cholecystitis, emphysematous cholecystitis, hemorrhagic cholecystitis, and perforation. Here we see patient with acute cholecystitis with sagittal uh, ultrasound and uh, gallbladder ultrasound. We have a large stone in the neck of the gallbladder with diffuse gallbladder wall sign. And in this patient, uh, the Murphy sign by ultrasound transducer is positive and findings are compatible with acute cholecystitis. Here, this is the axial CT scan showing thick wall gallbladder with gallbladder stone here and there. And a lot of Edimeters and the stranding around the gallbladder. 
consistent with acute cholecystitis. Here, another patient with sagittal ultrasound. We have large gold stones and posterior acoustic shadowing and thick wall gold bladder and some possible fluid, minimal fluid around the very cholecystic fluid around the gold bladder wall. Here, the axial CT scan, thick wall gold bladder with inflammatory thickening of the adjacent ascending colon in patient with ascending with a calculus cholecystitis. You see a lot of strands around the gold bladder. Here, another patient with acute cholecystitis, distended gold bladder wall, thick wall, and compatible with acute cholecystitis. And note, note here the irregularity and absence of enhancement in this part suggestive of gangrenous cholecystitis. And here, a lot of inflammatory oxidate around the gold bladder. And here, the common bile duct. Goldstones, cholelithiasis, and cholelithiasis. Patient present with biliary colic, dull right upper quadrant pain with radiation to the back or to the shoulder, right shoulder. Ultrasound and MRI have superior sensitivity, sensitivity for stone compared to the CT, about 80% with CT scan, often missing gibio cholesterol stones, which are isodens on to the bile. Ultrasound is best initial imaging modality, but given that distal common bile duct often obscured by gas on ultrasound, MRC must be much better for identifying stones and common bile duct. Here we see axial transabdominal ultrasound. We see here the common bile duct and it is dilated with stone in it and with posterior shadowing. Here this is a coronal MRCB MEP imaging demonstrated large stone in the distal common bile duct causing a proximal biliary obstruction. MRI is the best non invasive modality for evaluation of extra hepatic bile duct stone. Here we see coronal non enhanced CT scan with the stone calcified stone in the distal common bile duct with the proximal dilatation. The sensitivity of CT for gold stones is better than commonly thought, and it is about 80%. Acute hepatitis, any cause of hepatitis alcohol, viral toxic may result in liver swelling that stretch with liver capsule and cause right upper quadrant vein. Although all imaging modalities are usually normal in setting of acute hepatitis, but in severe cases, a large liver may be abnormally low density on CT scan or hypoechoic on ultrasound with the prominent bottle triads giving the appearance of the starry sky appearance. Marked reactive gold bladder wall thickening is common and auxiliary feature. Here we see patient with acute hepatitis with some fluid, acetic fluid here, and marked thickening of the gold bladder gold bladder wall in this patient with right, acute right upper quadrant vein. And the uh, liver here appear within normal. Hepatic stetosis or fatty liver usually asymptomatic, although acute fatty liver infiltration may stretch the liver capsule and cause 
about our quadrant twin. Most common definitions of steatosis include liver in attenuation less than spleen on non enhanced CT scan or absolute or absolute attenuation of liver on non enhanced CT scan of less than forty. MRI with chemical shift imaging is most sensitive modality for diagnostic of steatosis. Here we see axial cut CT scan with the geographic low attenuation area involving most of the liver in patient with fatty steatosis, fatty liver. Here we have chemical shift imaging, and here we have the in phase image, and this is the out phase image. And we see that in the out phase image, we have the ink artifact, and uh, the intensity of the liver is this list become more hypo intense than in the in phase highly consistent with uh, steatosis of the liver. Ascending cholangitis, biogenic infection of biliary tree due to biliary obstruction, most often due to distal obstructing stone. Biliary dilatation with thickened, hyper enhancing bile duct wall debris within the ductal human and heterogeneous liver enhancement most often in the arterial phase imaging. Frequent association with biogenic liver abscess in about 25%. Other forms of cholangitis include primary sclerosing cholangitis. Recurrent biogenic cholangitis may also cause acute right upper quadrant pain. Here we see axial CT, contrast enhanced CT scan with uh, dilatation, segmental dilatation of the bile ducts with hepatomegaly with right upper quadrant vein. Here, another patient, coronal MRCB with irregular alternating dilatation and narrowing of intrahepatic duct of the same patient with abnormal liver function representing with a right acute right acute upper quadrant vein. Here an ascending cholangitis T1 contrast enhanced fat subversed after liver transplant with fever scattered dilatation of peripheral enterohepatic ducts with thickening wall and high bar enhancing suggesting of or ascending cholangitis. Acute pancreatitis, enlarged edematous pancreas with loss of normal fatty lobulation with very pancreatic fat stranding, free fluid and inflammation, parenchymal, plus minus parenchymal necrosis, plus minus very pancreatic fluid collection. A vast majority of cases see secondary to alcohol abuse or gallstones, while primarily centered in mid abdomen, inflammation frequently spreads literally toward the gallbladder and the right colon, explaining a frequent representation with right upper quadrant bin. Here, this patient with uh, axial contrast enhanced CT scan with patient with acute pancreatitis demonstrating extensive infiltration of the fatty brains in the right uh, upper quadrant with inflammation of the colon, acidic colon, as well extended to the right bararenal area. Here, uh, axial contrast enhanced CT scan with extensive uh, infiltration of the fatty blends in the right upper quadrant 
impatient with pancreatic head and extended to the duodenum and ascending colon in that area and the bararenal area also. Duodenal ulcer most likely to be symptomatic when penetrating or perforated. Look for thickened duodenum with adjacent extra luminal gas or enteric contrast, although Less than 50% of patients have ectopic gas or contrast. Inflammation centered around duodenum in anterior bararenal space, but may spread laterally to involve adjacent structure like colon or gallbladder. Here we see a duodenal ulcer perforation with in this axial cut CT scan with extra luminal gas under the diaphragm and in the bota hepatis and in the hepatogastric ligament area. Here another patient with extra luminal gas and enteric contrast adjacent the duodenal bulb consistent with perforated duodenal ulcer. Less common causes we have acute colitis, appendicitis or mental infarction, epibluic appendigitis, pyogenic abscess, Passive hepatic congestion, diverticulitis, myelonephritis, hepatic tumor, and also we have thoracic causes like pneumonia, embyema, pericarditis, cardiac ischemia, and acute pulmonary embolism. Acute colitis, any form of acute colitis like pseudomonas. Brainous colitis, infectious, infectious colitis, ulcerative colitis, ischemic colitis that affect the ascending colon can cause right upper quadrant pain, colonic wall thickening, and submucosal edema with the colonic fat transcending and the inflammation. Here, patient with acute colitis and this contrast enhanced CT scan thickening of the colonic wall of the transverse colon and the hepatic flexure with the stranding due to infectious sedum membranous colitis. Here, an infectious colitis with on this axial contrast enhanced CT scan involving the, this part of the colon or due to can be can be the bacterial colitis. Appendicitis more often presented with right lower quadrant band, but tip of the appendix may extend upward to the right upper quadrant and cause our upper quadrant pain. Dilated thickened appendix with periabendicial fat stranding and free fluid plus minus uh, ectopic gas or fluid collection in cases with rupture. Here we see axial contrast enhanced CT scan. The appendix is rotocycle with lymph node and thickened and enhancing wall. Here, the patient, the same patient in coronal view with a retrocecal appendix, and it is medial to the colon. Here, a patient demonstrates thick wall appendix with inflammatory strands surrounding, compatible with uncomplicated acute appendicitis. Here, this patient with acute complicated appendicitis with the very colonic fluid collection and uh, extensive inflammatory changes due to perforated appendicitis. On mental infarction, on mental fat necrosis caused by disruption of arterial blood 
supply. Most cases are located on the right abdomen adjacent to the ascending colon and can present with right lower or right upper quadrant vein. Usually no evidence of or of other constitutional symptoms or elevated white VC. Ill-defined fat stranding or secret encapsulated fat containing mass in omentum world pattern of vessels leading to infarction. Here we see a contrast enhanced CT scan with encapsulated fat containing mass in the anterior omentum, a classic for omental infarction. Here, another patient with omental infarction, encapsulated fat density, lateral to the colon, lateral to the ascending colon with adjacent inflammatory uh, strands. Here, another patient with contrast enhanced CT scan, and here, this is the aumental infarction with surrounded the inflammatory changes from the sigmoid colon. Epibluic appendigitis, primary, primary thrombosis or torsion of epibluic appendage can occur anywhere, but much more common on the left lower quadrant, adjacent to the descending and sigmoid colon. Similar in appearance to mental infarction with small fat containing mass abutting the colon, with adjacent fat stranding with or without central dot sign. Here we see Epibluic appendigitis on axial contrast enhanced CT scan, fat containing mass, mass abutting the sigmoid with adjacent stranding and, and inflammation. And this is the central dot sign. A hepatic biogenic abscess can be associated with variety of causes, including recent surgery, cholangitis, septic thrombophilibitis, GI tract infection, multi-recreated cluster of thick-walled fluid collection in liver with surrounding low-density parenchymal edema. With or without gas, patient usually symptomatic with pain and fever and elevated white BC. Here we see a con contrast enhanced CT scan axial cut with pneumobilia and hepatic abscess following webbel operation. Here hepatic biogenic abscess on this axial T1 fat set MRI demonstrate large multi liquidated cystic liver mass with thick peripheral enhancement compatible with liver abscess. Patient presented with fever and abdominal pain. Here, another patient with CT scan with fever right above quadrant pain with abscess due to also untreated diverticulitis. Here, another patient with biogenic abscess, thick wall, cystic mass in the right lobe of the liver surrounding low density, bone chemical edema consistent with liver abscess. Passive hepatic congestion, although usually asymptomatic, enlargement and edema of liver may stretch the capsule and cause right upper quadrant pain. Enlarged edematous liver may demonstrate mosaic or not marked pattern of heterogeneous enhancement. Often, 
other an auxiliary finding of the white heart dysfunction, including cardiomegaly with relative enlargement of the white heart, dilatation of hepatic vein and IVC, and retrograde oversification of IVC or hepatic veins on arterial face imaging. Here, this patient with uh, large right-sided heart, and you see minimal acetic fluid in this cut, and minimal right-sided effusion, and right enlargement of hepatic veins and IVC. Here, another patient with hepatomegaly with passive congestion with heterogeneous enhancement of the liver calling calling that not much enhancement of the liver, suggestive of hepatic passive congestion. Diverticulitis, so right-sided diverticulitis is uncommon in Western world, but much more common in certain ethnic groups, especially ASEAN population. Finding similar to diverticulitis is where with much with multiple diverticulae included, including at least one focally inflamed diverticulum, colonic wall thickening and pericolonic stranding, fat stranding with ectopic gas or a fluid collection. Here we see right-sided colon with multiple diverticula with the stranding and thickening of the wall due to diverticulitis involving the cecum. Here, this is the diverticulitis involving the cecum and, uh, uh, and the ascending colon with ectopic gas bubble. And we see here, this is the normal appendix. Bilonephritis, infection of the right kidney can result in right upper quadrant pain. Patient typically febrile with the flank, tenderness, and elevated white PC. Enlarged kidney with asymptomatic perinephric stranding and striated or which shape areas of diminished enhancement on contrast enhanced CT scan, particularly in delayed nephrographic phase. Here we see patient with a multiple which area involving the right kidney with enlargement of the right kidney and very renal stranding consistent with uh, acute bilonephritis. Here another patient with acute bilonephritis with multiple which areas of the right kidney consistent with bilonephritis. Hepatic tumor, any tumor that is larger or large or oxophytic can stretch the capsule of the liver and cause pain, like giant hemangioma, large cyst, hepatocellular carcinoma, hepatic adenoma born to spontaneous bleeding or rupture uh, through the capsule with hemobertonium and cause pain. Here, patient with uh, axial contrast enhanced CT scan with giant hem hemangioma causing chronic and acute right upper quadrant pain. Here, this is a patient with hypervascular tumor mass obstructing the intrahepatic uh, biliary ducts, and also with the thrombosis of the portal vein. Here, another patient with uh, mass filling the lateral segment with hemorrhage. And here that large mass, it is heterogeneous on this bottom phase uh, due to hemorrhage and necrosis. 
another vision with multiple hem large hemangiomas. We have this patient demonstrate at least two focal masses with with hemorrhage represent hepatocellular carcinoma with extravasation of contrast. Here we have hepatic tumor demonstrate large hemorrhagic mass. Here we have there, there due to hepatic adenoma. Thoracic infection or inflammation. Any inflammatory process in the right lower quadrant, right lung, can cause right upper quadrant pain, including pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary infarction, blood effusion, embolema, <coughs> pericarditis, myocardial infarction. Lung bases should be carefully evaluated with any patient presented with the right upper quadrant pain. Thank you for listening and hoping to see you soon in another talk.